Hi everybody, welcome back to Sharon from Vivid Days. We've got some renovations happening at home. My Neil has undertaken creating this beautiful patio area, bless him, so sore and he's knackered. And it's going to take months and I'm going to be decorating inside so I will give you updates as we go but that's not what we're here for. Now I am going to talk a lot at the start of this video so if you don't like me waffling on, skip forward to the art. But I'm not going to talk much through the video. So this is a collaboration with the most amazing Lisa Wyatt. So please make sure you go over and see her channel. Um, this has just been one of those projects. And when I say one of those projects, everything you're going to do is a little challenge. And now normally I'd showcase the end result. It's to the wire. I don't even know if I'm going to finish. And I can't ask for another delay because I've already delayed it twice. Sorry, the wind's moving. So hope it's not going to shake too much. Steady, steady, steady. See if I can stop it. Yeah, so the reason I asked for a delayed first time, I'd ordered these supplies. We're going to be making some ocean themed trays. Not worked on them before. Didn't have moulds. My older my moulds, but because of what's happening in the world, they came very late. So I asked for an extension then. And then, believe it or not, we had a heat wave in the UK and it made it intolerable working in uh, the space that I have. It's only a small room, so it was intensified. And my resin wasn't curing. Now I'm working with a heat resistant uh, resin and because it was so humid up there, it was still bending. I'm like, oh no, is this gonna actually work? So then I got a second plan, uh, a wooden frame and see if I can turn that into a tray in case this one didn't. So that added the complexity of then I was juggling both sides and I really like the free form tray in the silicone mold, but is it gonna set? Is it gonna be right? And then the picture frame that I've converted into a tray, how, how's it all gonna work with the handles? Anyway, so fast forward it, started working through those problems coming along and then when I removed it from my silicone tray, I needed to dome it because it was raised at the edges. And I domed it and I took my time and normally I have no issues with do doming, but there was a tiny little seep on one corner. You see me working on that in the video. Now, I could have just left that seat seeping over just that one edge and in theory it would have been okay and the project would have been done. But no, I wanted to make it more complicated. There's a few air bubbles at the bottom of the tray and Sometimes you have to think about hindsight. Is the risk of ruining your piece worth a few air bubbles? Um, I mean, that's the downside of silicone mounds. You can take your time, you can get rid of as many bubbles as you want, but there's always a risk that there may be bubbles there. So I thought, you know what, I'm gonna fl f flash, flash coat it, flood coat it, very thin to get rid of those air bubbles and deal with that drip off. Well, worst decision I ever made in my life. Well, that's a bit dramatic, but a bad decision for the right reasons. So then I thought, right, okay, well, flip it on its side, tape it twice, Sharon, take your time, and then do a flood coat at the bottom. Well, I did that, and it seeped through the top a little bit. And then I had the imprints of the moulds that were underneath there to keep it level while I was making it sure it's level because heat resistant resin in, in the ones I'm using takes longer to cure. So then I'm thinking, I could throw it in the bin. But I'm like, oh my God, because nobody wants to waste resin on it. But I decided to give the top now another flush coat. And I've had to sit my mould back in the tray so I don't leave any prints in the bottom. I don't even know if it's going to work. But I'm going to show you floors and all. My other second my reserve one is now done. The only thing I'm not too sure on is, do I like the handles? Should I have just left them black? instead of trying to turn them into where I turn them into. So I'm going to help you make that decision with me and I can do that at the end. I've painted around the sides. I am not going to have time to um, put spray on the side to protect it and I want to protect it because it's going to be a tray and there might be drips. So I've managed to paint it. You'll get an idea of the composition, but I've got to uh, waterproof it and seal it in. So anyway, I'm showing, I'm digressing. The video itself, and the pieces I actually do love. There's lots of learns. There's things I want to do different on the next one. Uh, Lisa, I'm so sorry for the delays. I'm sorry that I'm not going to show you a finished product. I can't wait to see what you've created, but everybody else, thumbs up, subscribe, share, comments are always welcome. Make sure you come back and see me. Remember as well, I'm about to hit a massive milestone for me, which is 30,000 subscribers. So come back, there's going to be a giveaway soon. One of the pieces in here, <laughs> if I've resurrected it, 
will be part of the giveaway but um, showcase your art join my Facebook group I'd love to be inspired by you and hopefully I inspire you as well Facebook Etsy Redbubble if you want to purchase any of my goodies there might be some treasures there that you enjoy uh, yeah and other than that I hope you enjoy and I'll see you on the next video much love try and relax and you know what we're human we all have problems within our creative space sometimes and this was one of them bye
Hey, Sharon from Vivid Days having real time struggles. And I've done my base layer and I've added my whales, ready for the next layer. It's been curing for uh, 24 hours. And look at the bend in this still. I have got no idea what's going on with this. I'm using Alchem resin, but the special one for heat resistant. I've used it in coasters, not an issue. The only thing I can think about is it is so warm here and humid. We're having this ridiculous heat wave. So I'm going to keep on with it and hope that the resin gods uh, sort that out. But I now have a backup plan. So <laughs> I have come in here with one of my boards that I'm upcycling. And all I've done is painted on some aqua, no, turquoise and white on my board to prime it. And I'm going to replicate with my whales because at least this way it's going to be sturdy. And then I'll do a couple of layers and then put my handles in and I'll have a pressed out a serving tray. But oh my word, this should be a beautiful project to work on. I've not normally got a heat wave like this in the UK. It's like Australia weather. Anyway, to stop digressing, Sharon, let's get on with this. Let's have a couple of backup plans. So at least we've got something to put up for the collaboration. And at the end of the day, if it doesn't turn into a sturdy tray, that other one, uh, I could just stick it to a board or something. <laughs> oh no, real life struggles. Okay, the struggle is real, although I think it's finally set in. This is the second layer, and it's not as bendy, but there's still bend in there. But I'm hoping that because the heat wave is over with, if I add another layer, it's going to be okay. I think I'm just wishful thinking. <laughs> anyway, let's see this. I have my backup plan. And I think I've got a third backup plant on the way because I am just worried that I'm messing this up. Sorry, Lisa.
apologies for the light shine here but i'm about to come in and start working on these and we're finally getting progress this is finally hardened up now it just needs one more layer so what i'm gonna do is only come in and bring the tails up of the dad and the mum and then add the resin with just a little bit of the Colour Me Happy Super Sparkle White so it comes to the top and creates a dome and I think that one will be done. And then on this one here, I'm going to bring up Baby because he's a higher level than Mum and I think Baby and Big, Big Grandparent. <laughs> Um, I think they're the only ones so I want to keep that one shallower this one because they're not that covered up so if I go gentle with my waves or foam that's going to be okay but I am going to bring up the tail on that one and the baby and that should start to give you the illusion of depth and that then should take me to the top but I do want to show you some handles that I've got so these arrived today from Amazon and I love the shape of them now they are most likely going to have to go on side there um, or like so and I love them because they're black and they represent the shape of the whale a little bit so I'm contemplating do I come in and add a little bit of white paint here to blend it in with my whales because I think that way it will have enough grip off the it will have enough grip from the um, resin uh, to hold it tight sorry I'm just thinking out loud and wondering why it's taking shape like that so I might have to tape it in place Eek! or maybe I go across maybe my tray's going to be that way anyway I'll play around with that for a little bit but yeah I'm going to switch over to the above camera so you can watch what I'm doing fingers crossed Hi, I have painted my handles to look like whales, come in with a little bit of the white and I've added a little bit of glitter on there. Not too sure if you're going to see it. Now I'm just going to paint over this with UV resin just to protect the white paint, a very thin coat with a paintbrush. I'll leave that on the windowsill to dry and then they'll be ready for adding to my piece. Now they're abstract, they're <laughs> not meant to look exactly like white, but I wanted the handles to blend in with the theme and I think I've managed that. So I'd love to know your thoughts, but I will fast forward this and you can see me having a go at painting this with UV resin.
we are coming in to review this one this one we've got to do our final top coat so um the whale handles sharon style have stuck in nicely and i'm happy with the composition i just want to now do a flood coat at the top with clear <laughs> yeah that's it i just want it to come to the edge here uh, so that is going to be a nice sort of dome effect and bring all this level and that should bring that nice one i think together and then i'll come around paint the edges with gold and then make sure i um i'm gonna say waterproof it but varnish it protective spray because it is wood underneath but this is the bad boy that we are looking for and this is most likely just going to need a flood coat because i was really battling with um dust even though i dust and uh, polish my area every week this is where i struggled a little bit where once i applied my heat it kept falling over so i'm gonna have to pull that lip off and uh, get my standing on that pull it off and then sand it but they're the negatives i've seen but let's see how easy it comes away from this mold and have a little look for dust particles and then we will give it a flush coat on this and i want to check the underneath how bad that is but definitely needs doming you can see here there's a sort of raised lip there where it needs to all meet the resin and have that nice round dome effect so it'll need just a bit of light sanding but let's take it away from the mold okay so feel the static on that that has come away beautifully the handles are secure and it's not not bobbing around now you will get to see this better in daylight the sort of depth and transparency you can see that there let's see if i hold it under there oh yeah that's the transparency so you get to see those as though they're caught in a moment of time so now what i've got to work out is do i enjoy the sides or do i want to paint them silver but underneath that's why i painted it all white so it would look like it's the underneath of the whale uh, swimming so i'm just going to look so there are quite a few air bubbles underneath so i will do a flush coat underneath and this is the thing with molds i like working with molds but i find molds harder to control to make sure that it is 100 perfect without any tiny little air bubbles and you can take your time you can heat it up you can remove as many bubbles as you want but the minute you start blowing things around or adding products or glitter it heightens that risk of you get those tiny little air bubbles now you could sell your art and say small imperfections um, because really it's not going to devalue it if it bothers you like it's bothering me i'm just going to do a very uh, thin flush coat to remove those and around the edges it's not too bad but i can't see any actually a uh, couple down the side there you can get uv resi dab it with a little pin in there and then get uv on it but some of the bubbles that are trapped within the resin itself are pretty damn beautiful i think but I'm getting close to the deadline for <laughs> uh, the challenge, so I may have to come back and do that afterwards. So the most important thing is a flush coat at the top, and so it's domed, and getting rid of the overspill. So you're going to see me working on that now, and then what you're going to see me doing, it is beautiful though, really enjoy that. You'll get to see it more in daylight. It's only a tiny one compared to the other one, it is a family of them. Uh, so you'll see me sanding this down, getting rid of my overspills and then creating just a dome effect. Now I might do these separately because I really want to control the dust that is in here. Alright, with doming comes the risks of it spilling over the edge. So I am going to tape around the edge. To make sure if there's any runoff it's not going to ruin this bottom i am coming over and doing some more doping but i don't mean but i don't well a flush coat underneath here but i do not want to uh, get resin nipples all right sharon stop digressing
Okay, you're gonna hear a very flat Sharon. And the reason I'm flat and I'm gonna try and pick myself up is I just had one problem after another with this tray. Now, it's user error. There's been challenges, there's been heat waves, there's been, oh, <laughs> you can hear in my voice. Anyway, I thought I'd wake up this morning with one day to go until it's time to post our video for the collaboration and all I'd be doing is editing and showcasing the piece. Now, of the two pieces, one of them is successful and I just need to add my black border um, and that's all good. The, the challenge there is that because I've kept adding resin, the gap for my handles are not where I'd want them to be, so that's a learn. But it's the little one and I'll show you. So on the surface, you might think it looks good. And I went to dome it. And I domed it beautifully, but there was just one corner that kept being an issue. Here. And so I thought, you know what? Um, your doming looks good. Just come in and do the bottom. So I taped around the sides uh, multiple times, making sure it was crystal tight. But resin got through it. So I now have a good bottom. But then when I turned around, because I'm pushing the times, there were circle imprints where I'd levelled it. And I could give up on it. <laughs> what I've now got to do is get rid of the bobbles at the top and I'm going to come in and try one more resin at the top. And I've just got to say, that's it. I can do no more for the collaboration, but there's been lots of wins, uh, learns. And like, for instance... I get panicked, I pick up my thing and I've got um, resin on my hands. I'm leaving residue there. I'm pushing the time frame because it takes longer to cure when it's these heat resistant ones. Um, I imprinted on it, but I needed it to be level. So what I've decided to do is I am gonna refit it back to my mold. And I know it never really works when it's like that, but I am gonna put it back into my mold and then I'm gonna make sure that this is all level and give it one final thin top coat because you just can't have those circles there. The sides, I might have to just accept that because I took a risk and normally it's a calculated risk for me that works out. This one, it didn't. I might have to edge it with silver so it covers that up. The only thing that there might be is a little bit of runoff underneath and I just have to accept for this project. I'm so disappointed in myself because I love this piece. I love everything about it. And if I'd have just left it, with that little imperfection of that little runoff down the side and a little bit of tiny little holes underneath, which weren't that many, this would have been done. But no, I tried to make it perfect. And I think you just have to accept in the resin world, sometimes your art can't be perfect and you have to accept some of the imperfections because it's original. You're hand making it. Um, they're one of a kind. And you know, every every blemish on here tells a story of the artist. But anyway, I'm trying, I'm digressing. I'm trying to positive talk and pick myself up. Uh, but we will do this and then I will show you the other end that I'm doing, uh, which has just got a black edge. And from a top point of view, it's all good. Uh, the only thing I'm questioning is, should I have put those handles in as early as I did because I've lost the finger spacing? <laughs> oh, Just for thin and um, small people only, please, that can pick this tray up. Uh, the good thing is you can still pick it up around the sides, but maybe I should have put the handles at the sides and maybe I should have just kept them black uh, because it now looks too busy. But I'm just having a slump with my artistic journey and second guessing myself. Bear with me. I'm not going to show. No, I will show you how I give this a, a top coat because it's the end of this journey. And then hopefully we'll give it a review later this evening. It'll be tacky. I won't be able to do anything with it, but I'll be able to show you sort of the end results. And breathe, Sharon. Breathe, breathe, breathe.
This piece is done beautifully. I can't see any sort of dust particles or imperfections. Maybe next time I put these at the side, I'll show you close up anyway. Anyway, I'm just gonna do the sides in black. I feel that if I added any other color, it's gonna jazz it up even more and it needs to calm down a little bit in my opinion. So I'm just gonna add black around the edge and then I'll make sure I do seal it underneath and the side if it's gonna be used as a tray. All right, I am not going to take too long talking about this because it's been a very long video. Thank you for staying with me and I've talked throughout it. But let's show you. So this one at the 11th hour, I've pulled it out of its mold. I'm trying not to touch it because it'll be tacky. But the top coat, let's bring it down, sorry. You'll see stickiness on the handle, so I've learnt that. Um, yeah. The circles have now gone. So I've salvaged the top and the back is all good. Salvaged the back. It's really hard because I can't get too close to it or, or touch it too much because and putting it in the mold was probably the most sensible idea. You can see a little line where it's been in there. And the only thing I have to rescue is the sides. The sides are the things that you can see there little bit tacky but I'm going to come through and put some of the silver paint to edge it. Now if that, this event had gone through this disaster I would have loved to have seen them clear because I think that adds a lot of value to it. However I gambled the front and I gambled the back and it didn't pay off so we were then on resuscitation with our artwork and trying to bring it back to life and it's by no means perfect. I probably can find flaws on there and all that, but I just can't touch it. I don't want any more fingerprints or marks on there than need to be. But the bottoms of the whale, lovely. And the fact that you can see it moving through that, lovely, that shimmer uh, from the colour cottage pigment that you put in there, just glistens. And I love the different degrees in colour and how that bleeds out and the lacing. I would have loved to have had my mummy and baby more visible but that's just not the way this project was going to work out anyway so that's that one hope you can still see its beauty and potential i will come back and revisit doing this concept again but try and perfect it and not have some many user errors i said i'm not going to take too long but i am aren't i um but yeah it's just the edging i've got my dome in right let's see if i can get you so I've got the dome in right, top and bottom. I've got it resting on my mould because, like I say, I'm very careful about it touching anything. And let's bring you in to see this. Now, this is the one where now my fingers do just fit under, but not comfortably. You've more or less got to rest it there. So that's the thing I've got to fix. I'm not 100% sure I like these painted handles. I do like the painted handles, but with this. I don't know if it makes it too busy. But... I can come back and just paint that black, but I'd love your thoughts on that. Uh, but overall, my oceans are quite churny compared to where I would like them to be still, but that's the way these are going to go. Now, there is one imperfection, there is one tiny hair. When I put it in a single, uh, when I capture it in a certain light, I can just see one single hair in there, which is very, very frustrating. So none of these pieces are perfect, but I had a go and I've had fun. And the design concepts are, I think, have worked well. Uh, the black around the border, I think, was the right choice. Just not 100% sure on the handle. So feedback on me that. Feedback on what you do with the sides. But let's see if I can stand this up now. Very heavy because it is a wooden board underneath. <laughs> Good job it's just for me. Anyway, if I turn it like that, you're going to get to see it glisten with that super sparkle white and even the handle's got a nice little bit of glitter in there but I like the fact that uh, baby is on top of mum there so you've got that depth and then I brought that one up and I like the motion around the tail and then the really big one there sort of hidden can't see the head of the baby but I do like the fact that I added it onto so from a doming point of view 
you get to see it so the sides i have to paint again and then i'm going to put some uh varnish on them and protect them and underneath because if this is going to be a serving tray we're going to get some dribbles on there especially if we're having fun and we're having a party um yeah but i'm going to do a video on i'm going to put some vases on here should i say glasses and then see does this heat resistant work do do we leave marks and if we do get dribbles on there how are we going to clean them so i'm going to show you a few different ways but Thank you for hanging out for me. I know it's been exceptionally long. Make sure you do pop over and see Lisa White Art channel. I cannot wait to see what she's created. If you've watched the whole of this video in its entirety, thank you very much. That's a, a great way of um, giving back to the artists. I know that time is precious. I really appreciate it. If you're inspired by this piece, let me know. Let me know the answers to the questions about the handles and the border. And yeah, have you ever had disasters that you've tried to resurrect and it's been stress anyway thumbs up subscribe share comments are always welcome make sure you do come back and see me and have the most amazing day and lisa i can't wait to do another collaboration with you much love